Today's video is going to be different. Um, welcome back to Cut to the Cheese. We're going to be roasting chefs that make Indian food all wrong. Don't get me wrong, I know I have no authority over a professional chef to say whether the way they make Indian food is correct or not correct, but as an Indian citizen who grew up in an Indian household, watching my mother cook and watching my aunts cook, I can tell you what is right from wrong. And I've seen this recipe pop up on my feed a few times and it has 1.5 million views and I don't like it. And I'm going to tell you why. So this video is not going to be shady. It's just going to basically walk you through what you can do better to make great Indian food. And if you do want me to make my own iteration to the recipe I'm discussing here, leave it in the comments below. The recipe I'm going to be looking at is Joshua Weissman's recipe. I know he's got years of experience on me when it comes to food and being a professional chef, but there are a few things that I think could be better, could be a bit more traditional and could stop spreading the wrong information about how to cook Indian food at home. Um, Indian food isn't complicated, it's just got many layers to it and you just need to know what is the right time to put your spices in which is the main thing that I've seen most chefs get wrong. So let's start watching it. The wonderful world of cooks. It is one, I get it. A lot of people don't. The more spiced version, there's definitely still cream, there's definitely still butter, and there's definitely still tomatoes, but it's... Okay, here's the first thing I'm gonna say about Indian food that most people get wrong. A lot of the time, people I've met um, who like Indian food, and who don't really understand the origin and how it's actually made in sort of day-to-day -day life back in India, is that they confuse the word chili with spice. Um, Indian food, yes, uses a lot of lovely spices that add flavor, but not necessarily add heat. And a lot of the times I look at recipes and I'm like, that recipe, if it was kicked at home, would not have that amount of chili in it and that is something I always um, I worry about the way Indian food is perceived. Now for this one, for chicken tikka masala, it's actually great that he's going to make a spicy version. You can change that depending on how you like your food uh, and if you are making it, making it at home, I would highly recommend going slow and then adding the, the heat that you find acceptable. First, get a small pan and add one tablespoon or four grams of coriander seeds, along with half a teaspoon or one gram of cumin seeds. Heat that bad boy over medium heat, tossing off it until fragrant and toasted, about two minutes. Remove from the pan and let them spicy boys cool for a little bit. In a blender, add your spices, slap them around in there a little bit until as fine as possible. Then add seven cloves of garlic, a two inch knob of fresh peeled ginger, one tablespoon or seven grams of garam masala, one teaspoon or three grams of turmeric powder, and two red fresno or bird's eye chilies, stems removed obviously. Lastly, a quarter cup of water. Then Another sort of misconception about Indian food is that you have to make your spices from scratch every time you're cooking. That is not what happens in Indian homes. Now, the key spices that you would see in any Indian home, I'm going to insert a photo here, um, is usually going to be haldi, which is turmeric, garam masala. Garam means warm and masala means spice mix. So garam masala is usually um, a mix of spices that add really sort of warmth to a dish. And that honestly is just a feeling you're gonna get when you when you eat the dish. It's not really very chilly or adds heat, it just adds warmth. Um, you're gonna have dhania, which is coriander seeds that are completely crushed and powdered. You're gonna have jeera, which is cumin. Uh, you can have cinnamon, you can have um, Amchur, which is a dried mango powder, which is used in different dishes, not really this one. You have fenugreek leaves, which is called methi. There are many different iterations of what masalas any home would have. It obviously depends on what they like to eat in their day-to-day -day lives. What I found odd about the way he started this is adding jeera and coriander together. There's nothing wrong with it. In the dish, they're basically gonna merge anyways. It's just in terms of the order and sequence, this is not how it would go. And secondly, most women in India don't really have the time to make garam masala every day. That's just not going to happen. In After making his dried masala, he's making a paste with ginger, garlic, garam masala and um, chilies, I believe. Uh, chilies, stems removed. Lastly, with stems removed and water. And water. Begin blending this. You'll need to use your trusty blender plunger if you have one to help get it. 
Now I find that interesting because I don't think in Indian households you would make the full curry paste at the beginning. Most of the times you would start with the mirepoix, which is the Indian version of the, the first three ingredients you need to create great Indian dishes. Now this changes regionally, wherever you come from, what dish you're trying to emulate, whether it's going to be a Punjabi dish, um, a South Indian dish, it depends. Usually there's going to be onions, ginger, garlic. Sometimes the ginger is swapped for green chilies. Sometimes it's swapped for the stems of coriander. Um, sometimes it's just swapped for cumin, for example. But those are usually the base flavors that go into every Indian dish. And I haven't seen many times this curry paste being made before um, they start creating the layers of flavor in the pan. Because usually what would happen is you would add your onions, you would add your jeera, which is cumin, you would add your green chilies, you would add your ginger garlic paste, and you would add all the other flavors that he's just currently pulsating into one. Now the reason Indian food does that is that when you add spices in the right order, you're gonna have different layers of flavor. Yes, you can chuck everything in a pan and call it a day, but the way Indian cooking is usually built, it's about building that flavor layer by layer and allowing the oil to separate from the spices. Use your trusty blender plunger if you have one to help get it smooth. Once it's mostly smooth, go ahead and drizzle in two tablespoons or 30 milliliters of canola oil while blending. Now keep on blending until nicely incorporated and smooth. Remember, this ain't no chunky salsa. Get your To be fair to him, that curry paste does look really, really great. And if I was making a quick version that wasn't very authentic to how I've seen it, you know, made at home, I wouldn't mind using it that way. But most of the time, I haven't seen that happen. Please don't skip this or I'll be very angry with you. So first cut two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs, little tongue twister, into bite-sized pieces. In a bowl, mix together one cup or 255 grams of chicken in the yogurt mixture, cover with plastic wrap, and let marinate for 20 minutes or overnight. So there are a couple of things I wanted to mention about the chicken, the cut of chicken he has used, as well as the yogurt mixture. Um, now, most of the times what would happen is, and I had watched a video by an Indian chef called Ranveer Prar, and he had mentioned this in his show, and I found that really interesting because I had no idea before this. Basically, butter chicken was a dish that utilized the chicken that was cooked in the process of making a chicken tikka masala. Because usually a chicken tikka masala is essentially cooking the chicken on a charcoal grill, getting those lovely charred grill marks, and then making a gravy with it. And that makes the flavor have that smokiness that you're looking for. Obviously at home, you can't really emulate it. You can add a little bit of smoked paprika and that could help. With what he has done here, is usually if you were marinating chicken and this is usually a one size fits all marinade that i have seen for indian food and i do it myself yogurt is a must so he got that right uh, i would add garam masala ginger garlic paste some coriander some cumin all of the different spices and some um, coriander root which would be from the fresh coriander because that just packs so much flavor the one other thing he hasn't added in any of his layers yet is green chilies Green chilies is such an important flavor to have and to be cooked out in, in the layers that we're talking about of Indian food. So I'm surprised he hasn't added any of that. That's how we would do it differently if it was supposed to be made in India. Now, one more thing that I have to mention here, which I know is going to get me a little bit of heat. Indian chefs, or sorry, Indian homemakers, um, Indian people, my family, me, when we were growing up back in India, we were not that picky about the cut of meat. Now, most restaurants back in India as well would utilize the whole chicken. They don't really cook the chicken breast and chicken thigh separately. They just do it all in one because that's the easily accessible way of doing it. Um, I completely see why Western chefs usually have a narrative about, you know, either using chicken thigh or chicken breast. You do you it will come out tasty anyways. Um, in India, less waste is definitely ideal. A lot of the times, actually, I would notice people use a full uh, piece of chicken without even chopping it like he's done there first, cook it on the tandoori and then get the bits out. So you basically maximize the flavor by cooking it bone in, 
you've gotten um, the char and then you're basically adding it to the curry. Please do me a favor, I really gotta note this. If you don't wash your body with a one to one ratio of water to rice and some cardamom pops in a pressure. Now, this is just a personal irk. Um, I'm not a big fan of cardamom. I know a lot of the times butter chicken recipes call for it. I find, considering I've grown up in an Indian household, cardamom was always used um, in sweets. It would be used in like the halvas, it'd be used in gulab jamuns, it would be used in rasmalais. And I find that it's such a weird flavor to have in rice. Having said that, you know what Indian people do like? Jeera rice. Jeera means cumin. So all you would do is basically temper some cumin, bay leaf, and curry leaves and turmeric into oil. You could have about two or three tablespoons of oil and then you just add the water, let it boil and cook the basmati rice the way it is. It is delicious. So I would highly recommend you try cumin rice with it and not cardamom rice because nobody wants that. One 28 ounce can of whole peeled tomatoes and pass that pureed mixture through a sieve and place that to the sadaruni. Now heat a large saute pan or a medium sized pot over meat. My mother would never, never ever use that. I do, and I personally actually do, and I know she's gonna kill me when she knows this, but the whole idea of canning is never, I was just never heard of when I was growing up. Um, canned tomatoes aren't a thing. India has some beautiful produce, and most chefs and most people, even if they're cooking at home, they would do this out of fresh tomatoes and cook it out. You could do it two ways. My mother would just chop the tomatoes and use it in the curry and then blend it all together towards the end. Um, or you could boil the potatoes by scoring the skin and generally sort of cook them through. So they're sort of canned already, but it retains the color better. And if you really want to make chicken tikka masala and have that red color, I usually go the, the route of using a sort of Kashmiri chilies, which again, I don't think he has so far. Um, and tomato because both of those things add really a beautiful depth of color without adding any food coloring. This pot over medium high heat with enough oil to coat the bottom. Sear your chicken on both sides till nicely brown about three to four minutes each side and place to the side as well. Now once all your chicken is seared and you have a nice little fond in the bottom of your pan, reduce the heat to medium and add four tablespoons or 56 grams of unsalted. Now again here, um, I've already mentioned I would have preferred using whole cuts of meat. You don't have to do this in the pan. What I usually like doing is A, this is, uh, this is a really, really good tip. When you're marinating your chicken, add more yogurt than you want to cover the whole chicken. Because what I usually do is drain the mixture of the chicken from the yogurt. I basically cook the chicken on the highest temperature possible for 20 minutes so it gets that that charry, smoky flavor, you want the skin to have some black bits. You definitely do. The remainder of the marinade, I use it right after I've added onion, cumin, ginger, and garlic. That flavor and that tanginess of the, of the yogurt with the masalas, it just adds so much. And don't worry about it not being food safe. Obviously, you're gonna completely cook it off. You're gonna cook it off until you see the oil separate from the yogurt and oniony mixture. Do not make Indian food if you're not gonna wait for the oil to separate at every layer. Boobly, add one large diced sweet onion. Let that cook until the onion begins to turn translucent. Then add all of your remaining tikka masala paste, plus one tablespoon or seven grams of paprika and one teaspoon or two grams of- um, I've just watched the way he's done his onions. Just something to know is that most Indian cooking uses red onion, not white onion. You have to cook them further than he has. Uh, no matter how sort of what color you've gotten them on, you don't want the onion to be brown, but you need them to be soft and you need them to lose oil them all the moisture, which I don't think he has done so far. Blue powder. Cook that stirring often until the paste begins to stick to the bottom of the pan. Then add your pureed tomatoes, stir nicely, and that stir. Oh, so he has added Kashmiri chili powder. I would say I wish he had added more of the Kashmiri chili and not added paprika. I personally don't find paprika has such a offensive flavor. It's just if you really want to make Indian food, stick to degi mirch or Kashmiri mirch. Mirch means uh, medium heat. Let that simmer for about 10 minutes, stirring occasionally until it becomes thickened. So now again, what he's basically done, he's added the onions, he's added the curry paste, he's added uh, the tomatoes. What would be the right way to go? 
And you know what? Bear in mind, it, it might feel time consuming, but it's not going to be time consuming. You can have it on medium to high heat and you're going to be just fine. Is making sure that your onions have no moisture. Then you add the ginger garlic paste, you add the yogurt marinade, and you really let each of those layers uh, completely cook in the oil. Um, and then you add your tomato and repeat the same process. I'm not saying if you mix everything in and just, just go for it, it's not gonna taste good. The spices and the flavor in it, it's gonna be amazing. But if you're really trying to emulate um, Indian cooking, you should do that. One thing to note is, again, every time you order Indian food from a takeaway restaurant, you see a puddle of oil on top. That is not Indian cooking, I can assure you that. However, obviously restaurants want their food to stay out for longer. They want to maximize the amount of portions they can get out of it. And cooking in more oil helps the food not spoil quicker. That's exactly why most Indian restaurants have that sort of look. And the second thing is obviously the identification factor is that when you're ordering Indian food, you really want to see the reds, uh, the vibrancy and the oil on top to, to assure you that you're having authentic Indian, but you're really not. Finally, you can add one and a quarter cup or 300 milliliters of heavy cream. Mix until thoroughly. This is another thing that's controversial. Um, I personally love adding a little bit of cream and a lot of the restaurants I've had Indian food in back home do add a bit of cream. But essentially, most Indian dishes get the creaminess from cashews um, and not from cream. So if you're vegan and you want to make something along the lines of chicken tikka masala maybe with tofu or with chickpeas which i've done in the past you can completely remove any of the dairy and replace it with cashew and instead of sort of marinating your chicken in yogurt you could use lemon as long as you use an acid um one more thing that you can do which i think is going to be very useful because i've tried it and it's been really shit is that if you're marinating your chicken in anything sour don't do it longer than 24 hours. Anything longer and it's just going to taste off. And the sauce is thick and velvety smooth. So one thing that I noticed here is that because the onions weren't cooked all the way through, you can see um, a very chunky piece of onion. And, you, and I know that when you bite into it, you feel the texture. The reason onions are softened in Indian cooking is because you're essentially emulsifying the sauce without having to use um, uh, a blender. And in this particular dish, that texture would have been preferred. I really like biting into sort of cumin seeds um, when I'm eating, but not everybody who'd make Indian food would like that. Minutes or until chicken is cooked through and the sauce is thickened, velvety smooth and gorgeous. Season that to taste with salt and serve alongside some lovely steamed basmati rice, garnished with- Don't add your cilantro just on top. Indian food is like, you're gonna have to add cilantro in the dish, let it soften, let it turn color, oxidize, who cares? And then you add some fresh cilantro on top. Because essentially, um, when you mix cilantro into a warm dish, it's got a similar freshness and kick, but it's very muted and it goes so lovely with green chilies. Trust me, if you add green chilies and cilantro in your dish, at the end, it's going to be delicious. Or you can add it at the beginning, the green chilies, and that will be delicious too. Um, I haven't seen a lot of people do that. I always have a hard time, obviously, finding the exact green chilies that you know I would find back home. Jalapenos work just as well. Not the pickled ones, just plain green jalapenos. This curry honestly looks really delicious, and I would eat it, but I would sit here and correct him and judge him on the inside. Um, I'm surprised he hasn't served it with naan because what that's what I usually see other people do. Chicken tikka masala is delicious. It's even great when you've got rice and like a roti to sop up all the gravy and it's so, so, so good. Um, yeah, and those are my final thoughts on this video. I feel like he did a decent job and he's made some of the most common mistakes I've seen other chefs um, make about Indian food and I really enjoyed watching this and I have watched it in the past and secretly corrected his recipe in my head. Um, I'm happy to do this recipe for my channel if you're keen to know how a normal Indian person would make Indian food at home uh, without any of the fancy equipment, without any of the fancy grills and, and tavas to just have the most incredible flavor. 
Um, so yeah, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.